Right, we will get started then by, um, firstly, I'll introduce myself. Some of you may have spoken to me already. My name's Abigail and I work with Salesforce Supermums now, but you're getting a bit of a two for one deal today because I've actually done the Supermums program myself as well. So I should be able to chip in a little bit with some um, information about my experience as well. But today is about Sherian, who we've got with us here. So hi, Sharon. Thanks for your time today. Great to see you. Um, as you can both see, we are both working from home, <laughs> remote workers. We can both talk a little bit about that because I know that's something that a lot of people are interested in and why they're interested in retraining. So hi, Sharon. Would you like to start off by telling us a bit about yourself and uh, what you're doing? Sure. What you're doing. Um, so obviously, Sharon's my name. Um, I live up near Durham. Uh, cold and miserable here today just on and off sun and rain um i'm originally from south africa moved to the uk two and a half years ago and when i was in south africa i trained as a teacher and moved over to the uk and i was going to carry on with teaching but uh, circumstances kind of dictated that wasn't really going to work out so i went looking for what else could i do and um, I ended up finding the Super Mums course, gave it to my husband and said, what do you think of this? Uh, he's in BI and business intelligence, so he knows all about these things. So I kind of gave it to him and said, what is this? You know, give me some more information. He'd done a little bit of work with Salesforce, but not too much. And um, he said, yeah, well, it looks good. Go for it. Why not? So I took the plunge, did the course. Um, a year and a half later, we moved from Surrey, where we were up north, and I was like, well, I need a, another job because I had found one down south in London. And even though there weren't as many Salesforce jobs up here, I still got quite a few options. And yeah, I managed to find my current job, which is with family for every child. I'm not the sole Salesforce person. I am the database assistant. So um, I work closely with a lovely lady called Kirsty. Uh, she works, she lives in Estonia. So our organization is completely um, remote. We have, as of January, we no longer have an office even in London. So we are all entirely remote. Um, we have people all over in Spain, Australia, New Zealand, India. So we're, we're quite used to working remotely and we zoom and gchat quite a lot so I have, my main part of the job at the moment is working with the data we have a lot of data coming in from new zealand supporters and um, fundraising with them so i do a lot of importing and manipulating the data so it's been really for me it's been a great a great job and a great role because i have a mentor that i now work with and she's very knowledgeable and yeah I've done a lot of data manipulation which was always my slight weakness using data loader and you know, what data loader all entails it's a bit um, uh, intimidating sometimes so it's, it's been a really great opportunity for me to work a lot with data so I'm getting a lot of understanding of how data works and and how data works within Salesforce. So for me, that was kind of one of my weaknesses. So when this role came along, I thought it would be a great opportunity to improve the those weaknesses on myself. So it's been a, a great challenge for you, but really it sounds like applying something very specific from the course, because I remember during the course doing work with Data Loader. Um, so any of you out there thinking about signing up, that is a very key element of the course, and it sounds like you're putting it into practice, which is great. Just want to go back to you talking about um, the fact you work remotely. How do you find that day to day? How do you enjoy, how does it work? Like, what is your typical day like? Well, my typical day is uh, getting the kids off to school. So uh, they're all in breakfast club. So they're all in school by about quarter past eight. Uh, I have three kids. Um, they are seven, four and three. So still quite demanding the youngest two. Um, yeah. Our middle one starts in reception in September. So we've been doing a lot of school visits and teacher meetings and things like that and getting to know his new school, which luckily is with his brother. So that's, it. I know the school, but it's for him to know the school. 
Um, so my day is generally getting up, getting the kids ready, getting them off to school. I generally start about half past eight. Um, if I'm lucky, my husband takes the kids and then I'll start half an hour earlier so I can finish half an hour earlier. Uh, we have a mandatory hour lunch that we are supposed to take. Um, so I only finish at half past four, but it does allow me generally because I work through lunch, just as it is, you said at the computer, you tend to eat and do something at the same time. Um, it allows me that flexibility that I've had this week with lots of teacher visits with the reception year and um, coming to the end of school year with sports days and summer fairs. Um, it's allowed me to zip out during the day and know that I've, I've covered my hours anyway. Um, so it's, it does allow me that flexibility. If the kids are sick, I've got, I've got them at home with me. I can work remotely still. I don't have to take a day off work. Um, my my line manager and my mentor, Kirsty, she's super understanding. I mean, we all work from home, so we all know what it's like to have sick kids at home and still do work. So, you know, it's it's not a problem if they're sick. I kind of just make up the hours if I need to later in the evening. It's, yeah, it's great. Uh, it's a bit challenging as well. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people I know ask me about um, what the opportunities to work remotely and flexibly because that's something they really want out of doing something like this and it is something that a Salesforce career can offer. So it sounds like it's really um, met your expectations in terms of that element. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I work four days a week, so I have Fridays off to do housework, um, <laughs> mostly just to relax and, and have some time out for myself. Um, before the kids come home, they only go half day on a Friday. So yeah, it's it's definitely this role is is kind of like the best of both worlds for me. I work four days. I've got a day off to do what I need to do if I need to do groceries or anything that I might need to do. Take the kids to the doctor or go to the doctor myself. Whatever I need to do. Um, it's definitely given me what I wanted. Um, my mom was always a half day. She worked half days and was home in the holidays. It was always what I wanted to be for my kids. Um, and teaching sort of after that in South Africa, but this has just given me a little bit more flexibility as well. That's great. I'm glad it's uh, fulfilled the expectation for you. So now we've heard a little bit about where you are now, which is in a really good place by the sounds of it, but let's circle back to uh, before those times and how you ended up where you are now. So how did you find out about the Supermums program and what made you decide, yes, I'm going to do this? Um, to be very honest, I can't remember where I exactly found it. I think I was Googling. It was all a bit of a, a blur and I had gotten a um, teaching assistant job at a nursery and um, it kind of didn't meet my expectations. I didn't realise I'd be changing other children's bums and things like that. It was supposed to all be potty trained and I was just like, you know, I'm more six-year-olds and up and I just wasn't really happy. So um, I gave um, then Deborah a call and we had a, a good chat about it and managed to get the money together for the course. And, and that's, yeah, that's where I ended up. Um, so yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I did get my husband to kind of look into it as well um, because he was, he's in this kind of industry, he was able to give me an idea of what it would be like. He didn't give me any idea. Um, he was pretty bad at that. Um, but, you know, coming from a teacher's background, I was heading into the first week of the course. I was, I was pretty anxious. I was like, oh my gosh, is this the right thing? Have I done the right thing? Am I even going to understand anything that they're all talking about? Um, I have no business background. Um, I'm a teacher. And I teach six-year-olds, seven-year-olds and you know the most I have to think about is like five plus five. Um, but in the end after the first the first course, uh, the first session, I went on to the trailhead and I went through the first trailhead and I was like ah oh, this is pretty cool, this is easy, this is written for people like me, this is written for people who actually have no clue what they're even doing on a computer. Um, so that gave me added confidence to keep coming every week and keep going and finish the course. Um, Just for those who may not know already, um, because they think about signing up to the course, can you explain 
to everyone what Trailhead is, kind of in your own words and what you like about it. I kind of think of Trailhead as Salesforce for dummies. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's as if you were explaining to your parents how to send an email and you think of all the steps you'd have to give them specifically that they'd be able to send an email all on their own without you sitting next to them. That's kind of what Trailhead is and it explains in depth, step by step, all the different parts of Salesforce, how they work, how they fit together, um, how to do things, how to change things. Um, so yeah, it's it's just like a Salesforce for dummies. Um, yeah, it's kind of a good explanation. I really like Trailhead as well. I like how clever they are with the gamification of it. So yeah. it seems to me, but it is very satisfying when you get the badges and they have the little explosion confetti on the screen that you've won another badge and you know it's a, it's a real nice little motivational boost it sounds like a silly thing but the way it's structured is really kind of motivational and, and makes you want to keep going to the next thing and earn those badges and um build up your statuses through to when you've earned a certain number of badges you can uh, reach these different levels which is is really lovely and over the course of um the admin course you should reach about 50 badges how many are you on now do you still keep doing some or to be very honest, I haven't done for quite a while. Um, I think I'm only on 57. Um, I kind of, I've started quite a few <laughs> and I haven't actually finished them. So I've started a lot of modules um, and I haven't mm -hmm. finished. What I what I really do like now is the um, the maintenance of them. Um, so um, that doing that on the trailhead has, has been just a big difference and it's, very quick, simple and easy to kind of keep up to date with all the changes that happen throughout the year. I think that's something you have to remember about um, Salesforce and perhaps technology in general is that it's it's learning to keep learning almost a bit and learning how to learn and which questions to ask and where to find the information because although yes getting your certification is great that things are always changing so that um, like the release certificates that you do to keep your knowledge and skills up to date are really important so yeah do you find are you excited to like continue learning what do you want to learn next have you got any particular ambitions of things you want to go on to do well um funny enough our organization is um we're in the pro well we, we were going to be switching over to lightning this year um we have a, a slight issue with our payment uh, gateway that they're not lightning ready so they're holding us back from switching over to lightning so we'll be within the next hopefully six to 12 months switching over to lightning ourselves as well so there's going to be a lot of um a lot of training i do like training other people in salesforce um when i was working for my previous charity down south in london i did a little bit of report training with one of their sister organizations who also use Salesforce and they were pretty clueless about how reports worked um, and they had to rely on the, the IT manager who worked kind of part time for them to do reports. So I went in and helped them, you know, just kind of get a basic understanding of what reports are and what they can actually find from their reports. Uh, so that was, that, I enjoyed that. Um, at the moment, I think I'm kind of working towards taking over the New Zealand section of our charity, um, getting enough experience that I can kind of handle the New Zealand side and the other, yeah. um, my manager will handle um, the more intricate database um, issues like the payment gateways. We're also um, getting an API uh, plugin. So where literally data can just come from our payment and New Zealand straight into Salesforce. So we're going to have a lot of processes. Um, I do like doing automation. I love automation where things can just do it all on their own. So my my next my challenge this year is to learn more about formulas in Salesforce, which are quite daunting. My brain struggles to understand how they all work. Like I know how they work, but I don't always know how to get them to work for me. So yeah, I, I can use Google. yeah, and I think a lot of people do. I know I think we've just um, you've touched on a couple of topics there that I want to come back to and you talking about um, formulas that particularly reminded me of my mentor on the course. And you mentioned as well that you're really enjoying being in a workplace with someone more experienced who can help you through it. But also part of the part of the course is having a mentor. 
and that was one of the things that I found really great and my mentor kind of specialized in some of the uh, formula stuff and she's done some talks at the world tours on formulas so I'll have to send you some of her resources <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, on that topic, so going back to the course itself, um, how did you find the, how useful did you find the mentor relationship and what was your mentor like? Um, so I worked with Martin, he was great, um, he, it was funny how he was, he was almost like me, he's a bit more quieter, um, doesn't push, not very loud and uh, it worked out great. Um, he he gave me enough space because I was, I mean, I'd done the course and we'd gotten to the point of now, you know, you have to do the actual work for an organization. And I was, I was quite scared. I won't lie. I was like, thanking myself up, like, you can do this. You can do this. It's okay. You can. It's not that hard. If it makes a mistake, it's okay. And that was the, the, the hardest thing for me to you know, realize was it's, it's just, it's just a, it's just a computer if you make a mistake you can fix it you can it's not it's not like you're breaking something that cannot be fixed um and he was just really good and really calm and um you know, the work he gave me i got through and then he was like well would you like to train them and i was like yeah okay um so <laughs> it, it, it was great he gave me extra opportunities um you know because sometimes the organizations aren't as complex um, as some others. So your work experience is maybe not as much. So you get other things to do and being a teacher, doing the training for that organization, I really enjoyed as well. Um, so it kind of, it helped as well, make it just that little bit more special for me because I got to teach somebody else. Yeah, uh, that is a key part of the work experience for everyone now, actually, is, and I did it as well, so once you've done the implementation or whatever it is that you're doing for your work experience placement, you then train a user in that organisation how to use it, and I was quite surprised and daunted by that at first as well, but it was so confidence building to be able to plan it and then do it and then realise, oh yes, I do know, I have learned something, I do know how yeah. to do this. Yeah. <laughs> So that was, for me, that was a really great um, part of the work experience itself, actually doing the implementation for the organization, but then teaching someone else how to do it was like, wow, okay, I've learned something here, this is great. <laughs> yeah, it does, it does definitely boost your confidence once you've done that and you're like, oh, actually, I do know what I'm talking about, it's not so bad. <laughs> Yeah. So throughout the period of the course itself, um, we were having to manage um, kind of studying, they say, and I think a big question a lot of people have, especially when they have other commitments, work and kids and all sorts going on, is how to manage that study, how to make sure you stay motivated and find the time to do it. How did you uh, find that and how did you manage that for yourself? Um, so I was, I, was, I was fortunate enough that my parents are here as well. So um, when I would have the um, the webinars, uh, my mum would watch the kids, so she would keep them out the way so that I could focus on the webinars. And then I would just do a little bit in the evenings, every night, um, just do the homework that gets given. Um, yeah, I suppose, you know, I, I think if you're maybe in London and you're commuting, you can do the, the trailheads on the way home in the train. Um, I did that a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I used to read a book, but uh, you know, if you, if you're doing if you're doing the course, that's a good opportunity to use to to do the homework. Um, and yeah, in the evenings, uh, I would do. It took me a while to do the trailheads, but it's because I'm the kind of person that has to write everything down. So I was writing notes from the trailheads down. It's just the way that I learn. Um, so the trailheads did take me a bit longer, but I wasn't working, so I had that time. But if, if you don't need to write everything down like me, then the trailheads you, you could easily do in the evenings as homework. Yeah, I really enjoyed the mix actually throughout the course of the trailheads and then doing practical 
kind of with the case study, the homework as well. That was really good. Yeah, it was great to have the trailheads, especially some of them. Some of the trailheads are just multiple choice questions, and they'll yeah. be great to do on the move because you can buzz through them quite quickly and learn something new. And then some of them are a bit more complicated, involve actually doing something in a trailhead playground, which is like a pretend South Force instance. And those ones require a bit more time and things for you to work through. And I really enjoyed often with some of the homework having the. Um, it's great that you continue to get access to the webinar whenever you need it. So yeah. I would yeah. often try and watch it live as well, just for that discipline aspect of being there and making sure I was concentrating. But then I would bring it up and watch it again while I was trying to do my homework. So it was like stop, start, start trying to do it as, a, as we went along. But yeah, I would say we say on average about 16 hours a week is what people need to dedicate to be able to fit in that time. And I would say as well, as someone who also came from a non-technical background, I probably did need that amount of time to make sure I'd taken everything in and understood it. There were a few that I buzzed through a lot more quickly, but other times I needed to really kind of get my head into the zone for it. Yeah. I mean, I think if you come from a business background or a marketing background even, it would probably be easier um, because I came from teaching us. It, it did also take me a little bit longer just because I'm not a business person. <laughs> so some of the concepts I kind of had to, I was always trying to relate it to my experience and how would you use this in teaching and how would you use this as a teacher? And so I was always thinking back in my head, how can teachers use this tool? Um, and it's something I'd like to explore um, once I think my kids are settled properly in school and I've kind of managed to find a routine with all their homework. Um, I'd like to kind of see how schools can actually utilise it because I think there is a platform where it can be utilised in schools as well. Yeah, that's a really good idea. So um, I just want to add in at this point, if anyone has any questions that they want to ask, please do type them in the box. You should be able to um, type in questions, so please do write them in and I should be able to see them on my screen and then either I can answer them or Sherry and can uh, answer them as well. So please do write some questions if you have any. Otherwise, um, I've got a few more questions for you still. Sure. So I want to know, you kind of touched on this in certain points, but what was the kind of best thing about the course and what was the hardest thing about the course? Um, if you can remember. <laughs> it's a while ago. A bit long ago. Um, I'm trying to think. I, it was nice. Um, you know, I enjoyed the, the weekly webinars. Um, it was nice to be able to at least ask questions if you needed to. There was, you know, somebody there on the other end that you could actually ask instead of just Googling. Um, I think the hardest part I found was, I'd say maybe kind of, I, and I think the structures probably changed a bit, just certain things were, uh, different modules were in different places and I think if they'd been in a slightly different order it would have made it a little bit easier for me to um, kind of follow the whole Salesforce just because I'd never touched Salesforce and heard of it before. Um, but yeah, I think the homework was all doable. Um, I did find the super badges. I still haven't completed a super badge and that's it's just me. I, just, I found those really, really hard and I still haven't finished them because it's just, that was quite daunting. Yeah, that's on your to-do list, that bit. <laughs> I think the, um, <laughs> the course structure as well, because I did it probably a little bit more recently than you, and then um, we've got Vicky, who's our new head of training, who'll be running anything that um, our attendees of this webinar sign up to. And um, there's definitely a quite logical structure there I think anyway, of uh, building up so that by the end, because you're building out throughout the course this um, fake instance of Salesforce that's based on a case study and um, it does take you through kind of step by step by step. But what it does mean is it's um, quite important to try and keep up week to week um, on that else you get a little bit behind um, it's quite hard to jump ahead. You need to follow the logical step progression and that is very much um, how Salesforce works anyway. Everything's very logical. You know, if something yeah. isn't working, there's usually a good reason behind it. And I personally, that was something I find quite satisfying with it when you're not making something work and you just keep at it, keep at it. And then you figure out that one box you haven't checked or that one thing you haven't done. And there's a perfectly good reason why it's not working. You just need to figure it out. <laughs> it's always that one tiny little thing, like one tiny comma in the wrong place that you've got to find. 
Um, yeah, exactly. That's one of the ah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, that can be one of the uh, frustrating things about Salesforce. I guess it can be really tiny things that need to uh, to make it work. But then moving on, what's what, what's your kind of favourite thing about Salesforce? Not just the course, but now you're in the Salesforce ecosystem, as we call it. You're working for an organisation that uses Salesforce, so. Um, you know, it's quite a common term for, for those of you who are thinking about coming into the Salesforce ecosystem. It just means you work with Salesforce. You might not work for Salesforce, the company, but you work for an organization that uses Salesforce. You're part of the ecosystem. And um, it's a really great place to be. It's very supportive. Um, what's your favorite thing about being part of the Salesforce community? I think, you know, that you, you could get stuck on a, a problem and you, you Google it and you will find an answer. And if you don't know that answer, you can ask on the forums and you will get an answer. Or if you need help, say you were you needed a formula, if I needed a formula and I couldn't kind of figure it out or I couldn't find it in Salesforce, I could ask on one of their forums and they would somebody would give me the formula. Somebody would type it all out for me and actually just, here you go, here's your formula. Um, people are just so helpful. Um, there's none of this oh, but you know, you really should go and learn how to do a formula. They're just like, oh yeah, here we go. Here's how you do the formula. Let me know if it works. Um, yeah. It's really, really helpful in that, in that sense. Everyone's just so helpful and so willing to share what they know. It's not about, you know, keeping what they found to themselves. Everyone's, you know, sharing what they know, um, useful tips, um, anything like that. Just, and I mean, I had, a, I had an issue last week, all of a sudden my data loader was, messing around with my dates again. Um, now, when I originally started in the organization, we used to import um, the data, adding in a date so that um, Salesforce didn't take away a date. But then mine was adding more because of time zones and all of that. And it started it again this week. And it was just really weird as to why it was doing that. And after a little, little bit of Googling, I managed to find that instead of a London Europe time zone, I just need to write GMT. I was like, well, there we go. <laughs> Five minutes of Googling and I had solved my problem. Um, yeah. We are kind of, you know, trying to figure it out myself. Um, I think sometimes, you know, we don't always have to figure it out ourselves. Um, I think the best thing is to start with Google and work your way backwards yeah. rather than trying to figure it out yourself. You know, get some ideas from Google, then try and figure it out. But sometimes it's not worth trying to figure things out yourself with Salesforce because it's just, so much knowledge out there. Um, everyone, somebody will know the answer to the problem. That's what I really like about it too, how generous the community is with their time and their knowledge. So once you're in the community, there are lots of things you can do. Um, so there are actual, there's a big social community, especially on Twitter. Um, that you can ask questions to, but also in real life as well. There's um, lots of meetups you can go to. So there's um, lots of regional meetups where, especially if you end up as like a solo admin or someone who works from home a lot and you want to get out and meet some other like-minded people and <laughs> need some out the house time. Um, there's lots of that going on, which is really nice, really nice social community. And also something called Salesforce Saturdays, which are quite informal meetups often in, uh, cafes and things where you can take along your laptop and you just do that, talk to people in real life about any challenges you've been having and everyone's really willing to share, which is really nice. And there's none of this expectation that someone knows it all and you should just have to figure it out. It's yeah, yeah. a really nice community to be in, which is lovely. And I've, I've really enjoyed that as well. So yeah, thank you very much um, for telling us about your favorite thing about Salesforce. I guess, so we've got some people on the line who are thinking about signing up. Um, what would be your advice to anyone who's thinking about it but is a bit on the fence? Um, it depends, I suppose, on why you're on the fence. Um, mm -hmm. I think the way I see it is there is no harm in doing the course at all. Um, you know, if, if you want to change careers, uh, I've done it from a teacher to a Salesforce administrator um, and that's kind of you think well teacher to Salesforce to computers to you know things like that and it didn't seem like it would be a good fit and it was um, so I think yeah if you're on the course if you're on the fence there's 
I mean, I don't know what your reason would be to be on the fence. So, you know, because mm -hmm. money, but you can take a note. You know, so it's it's definitely something worth doing. Salesforce mm -hmm. is growing. Salesforce is everywhere. You have the opportunity to go and work in a charity and work four days a week. Um, you can work for a big organization. You know, I don't have, I don't want to be a CEO of any corporation, but I am very happy with where I am right now. Uh, if at a later stage I want to change and move up, I can, I know I can. Um, so there's just so much you can do and branch out in with Salesforce. There's a lot of opportunities. Um, I think in, in terms of like job security, I think Salesforce is a very secure um, market to be in. Uh, in terms of, you know, if anybody's worried about job security um, or if they have ever worried, I don't think it's going to be something to worry about with Salesforce for at least maybe 50 years. Depending on how it goes, I don't know. Um, yeah, and that's kind of why Salesforce Supermums existed and why Heather set it up because um, Heather Black, who's our founder, she does run her own um, Salesforce consultancy that helps um, charities implement Salesforce and that's where we get a lot of our work experience placements from. But she also has recruited Supermums and she set up Supermums because she wasn't finding that talent that she needed. And I think um, not only in the Salesforce skills themselves, but a lot of people coming onto the course have got experience in other areas that is applicable um, and that is really what we can sell to employers is that we've got people with great life experience and that is really important going into a business as well to have that overview can be really helpful and even you were saying even though teaching seems like a bit of a left turn of a background to come from you know, it has really helped because you're still using those skills to teach other people how to use the instant you know across your organization so almost any background when I'm speaking to people, there is some knowledge that you can apply going forward to whatever role you want to go in. And I think, yeah, I didn't come from a tech background either. So people don't have to worry too much about that aspect of it, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much for your time. I just want to see if anyone, has anyone got any questions? I don't think I've had any in yet, but oh yes, hang on. We've got a question in here. Just give me a moment to try and view it for you and I will share. Excuse my technology, I haven't done one of these before, so just trying to find <laughs> where to read it. Will Salesforce Supermums be running next year too? Um, yes, so we have cohorts starting in September. Uh, um, so that'll be starting on the 10th of September and the deadline to sign up for that is coming up soon. So if you do want to start this year, we've got September. Uh, we will be running one in November and then not again till February. So yes, there will be Supermums running next year as well. And another question, are there many freelance roles available once training has finished? Uh, we do have some mums uh, who work on freelance projects as well. Did you do any of that, Sherian, between getting your jobs? Oh, Sherian, have we lost you there a little bit? I'll continue talking until we get you back. I'm not sure if that's me or you. Um, but yes, we do have some people who go on to do freelancing roles. Um, so there are some available. We can talk a little bit about your exact experience, perhaps if you get in touch with me and we can put you in touch with the recruitment people. But yes, freelancing is definitely an option. And also wanted to mention about some of the other courses. So we talked about where Salesforce can take you in the future. Sherry and there said she's really happy where she is now, but there's great job security in Salesforce because there are lots of other opportunities for further training and development. So whatever your background, there might be something you want to go into. That could include um, some of the new courses that we're doing. So this autumn, we're starting a platform developer course. So if you really get into the technical side of it, there's that option to move on to. And we're hoping to start a marketing course as well. So that's looking at some different functionality that Salesforce has around e-marketing. So whatever your background, there are different ways you can go, whether that be a really technical route or broadening out your skills to different areas of the Salesforce platform. There are lots of different opportunities there as well. So, um, yeah, I think that's all the questions I've got there. Sharon, is there any kind of final words of wisdom you would like to add <laughs> for our uh, uh, potential employees or anyone out there watching today? I think um, I'm going to just steal from Nike and just do it. Have some faith in yourself, um, because I think that's what a lot of 
us women lack is is a faith in ourselves and our abilities um so yeah have some faith take a leap and just do it oh thank you very much i think that's a really really great place to leave it i couldn't agree more so thanks very much for your time sharon thank you much yeah. thank you very much to everyone for attending today and if you've got any further questions don't hesitate to get in touch abigail at economicchange.co.uk or you can book in a call with me on calendly i'm sure you've all already got that link hopefully i'll see some of your application forms soon take care Bye. Bye.